Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. In this lesson, we are going to learn to find square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, and more. Before you learn to find the roots, though, you must learn your squares, your cubes, and your fourth powers, and possibly your fifth powers. As you can see on the right here, I've made a list. Hopefully you already know most of these squares. The last one that I have written here, 169, do you know what that is the square of? That's the square of 13. You need to know that one. You also need to know 14. 14 squared is 196. 15 squared is 225. 16 squared is 256. Now, you need to really know all of these as your squares and a few more. 20 squared is 400. 30 squared is 900. So you need to put these in your good memory bank, in your head. Also, for your cube list, you need to write it out. One cubed is one. Two cubed, which means write a two down three times and multiply it, and you'll get eight. Three times three times three, or three cubed is 27. Four cubed is four times four times four is 64. 125 is five cubed. 216 is six cubed. Our next powers are the fourth powers. One to the fourth is, of course, one. Two to the fourth power is 16. Three to the fourth power, that's three times three times three, is 81. 256 is four times four times four times four. Now you'll notice that the 81 is in the fourth power list, but it's also over here in the squares list. 64 is on the list twice. It's in the squares list. It's also in the cubes list. 4 cubed is 64. 8 squared is 64. All right, now that we've studied or reviewed all your powers that you possibly will need to know, let's start finding some roots. What is the square root of 64? Well, that's 8, because 8 times 8 is 64. What is the square root of... Um, 196, do you remember that one? Ah, 14. Well, what if I put a negative in front of the square root? Sometimes they will do that in the book. Well, it doesn't really change your work. As long as the negative is outside the radical here, you really only have to write it down again. A negative 8. If I ask you what's the negative square root of 196, it is negative six, um, 14. So when they write a negative outside the radical symbol here, that just means bring it along that they want a negative answer. Now if the negative sign is underneath, that's a different problem. And we're not going to talk about that right now with the squares. We cannot take the square root of a negative number. All right, let's look at one that's not on the list. Let's look at the square root of 50. 50 is not on the perfect square list. But, what we will do when that happens, we will change these to a multiplication problem. Now, we'll always use multiplication. It does always work. We always have to look at our list and use that number off the list first. You want to always pick the largest number that you can use on the list of squares. 25 times 2 is 50. The square root of the 25, I know, that's 5. So, I no longer have to write a square root on it. But the 2, I do not know, so it has to keep its square root. 5 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 50. Uh, the square root of 50 is an irrational number. The calculator will give you a long decimal. It actually is unending, though, and so we have to round it off. Now type in the 5 times the square root of 2 into your calculator, and you will find that you will have the same answer that we have I'm taking the square root of the 50. Alright, let's look at another, the square root of 75. Now again, if you look at the list over here, you want to find the largest number that divides evenly into 75. Well, again, it's 25. 25 times 3. That's 5 times the square root of 3. Alright, let's try a larger number. What about 360? 
you want to find the largest number. If you don't find the largest number, you'll have more work to do. What's the largest number over here that will divide evenly into 360? Well, it's 36. So let's change this to 36 times 10. What is the square root of 36? Well, it's 6. Do we know the square root of 10? No. So it stays underneath the square root symbol. 6 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 360. Let's find the square root of uh, 3,600. They're similar numbers. Just multiplied that one up there by 10, didn't I? But notice what happens. If I use my 36 again, I can't use 10, what will I have to use? 36 times 100. Now do you see both of these numbers are on our list of squares? The square root of 36 is a 6. The square root of 100 is a 10. Now these will be multiplied. Neither one of these has a square root symbol anymore because we found the square roots. So the answer is 60. The square root of 3,600 is the square root, is, uh, excuse me, 60. I want to mention a little more about the square root of 360. Sometimes students will not think of the largest number that's on the list. And they might choose to use, say, 9 times 40 will also give you 360. Now, if you choose to use a number that's not particularly large, and if it's not the largest, then it will create more work for you. You can still get the right answer, but it'll just be more work. The square root of 9 is 3, and then the square root of 40, 40 is not on the list, <clears throat> so I can't find its square root. But the square root of 40 is not simplified, because there is a number on the list that will divide evenly into the 40. I have to continue. 3 times the square root of 4 times 10. Now we will have 3 still is there, but we'll have now multiplied times 2 square roots of 10. Now 3 times 2 is 6, so we are going to get the same answer. It just takes more work. So it's best to always find the largest number on the list that you can find for your first number underneath the square root. Let's look at some cube roots now. Look at your cube root list. The cube root of 54. Uh, we do not know the cube root of 54. Um, 54 is not on our list, but what number over here will divide evenly into 54? Other than 1. The 1's really don't help you. 8 will not divide evenly into 54. Will 27? Yes, 27 times 2. So the cube root of 54 can be changed to the square root of 20, I'm mean, a cube root of 27 times 2. The cube root of 27 is 3. We know that one. The cube root of 2 we do not know, so it stays underneath the radical. Our answer is 3 times the cube root of 2. Alright, let's try a fourth power problem. Now look at your list over here. What will divide evenly into 96? Well, well, 16, I know 81 won't. 16 does divide evenly into 96. 16 times what? Well, it's 6. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. We know this one. It's on our list. The fourth root of 6 we do not know, so we leave it the fourth root of 6. So learn these lists. Memorize them so that if you see an 81, you'll think, oh, that's a square. Or if you see 125 from now on, you'll think, oh, that's one of my cubes. It's okay to take a moment to think of which cube it is or which square it is, but you need to recognize these numbers and know, oh, those were my powers. Those are my squares or my cubes or my fourth powers. You will find working these uh, square roots, cube roots, and fourth roots much easier if you will memorize these. I have another video that will teach you how to find the uh, roots using variables. This is Susan Johnson with mathinabox.com. Email me any questions you have. Thanks.